Hello, epic viewers from around the multiverse. Prepare to bask in unprecedented glory because today I'm going to be commencing my review of day five of the real world job experience. Now, how would I deem day five to be? Would I deem the experience to be meritorious? Would I deem the experience to be fruitful? Or would I deem the experience to be characterized by insipid mediocrity? Or would I deem the experience to be ineffably abhorrent? Well, in a nutshell, to recapitulate, I would deem the experience to be abysmal, appalling, egregious, and detestable to say the least. Now why did I dread working the job? Well in my previous videos if you saw them I elucidated how I dreaded the facets of the job. So some of the responsibilities that I undergo encompass hauling heavy loads and um, I also perform other responsibilities that I think are sheer and utter waste of time but my managers force these demands upon me, which I need to abide by, and if I don't, then I can't sustain the job. So, a paycheck, if you're working a real private sector job, is conditional. You have to succumb to the onerous burden of drudgery just to be able to temporarily earn revenue. But, um, yeah, the job has been unbearable to say the least. Why? Even though the staff has been cordial, amicable, professional, diligent, and courteous, the tasks that I have to undergo and complete are just um, laborious, induce a tremendous amount of inflammation, and um, are, strenu are, are strenuous to say the least. So, I never have the opportunity to sit down at the job. I'm standing for at least eight hours at a time. Breaks are practically non-existent. They elapse so quickly, it's almost like they never transpired in the first place. Now, I'm likely going to develop varicose veins because my body is so inflamed, I'm constantly standing up, and um, when I do bend, I'm bending in awkward positions at the job that um, causes me to place a tremendous strain on my body. And these muscle strains, the strains of the tendons, they lead to um, sprains. And, if this wasn't bad enough, this job is encroaching on my sleep schedule, eating schedule, my circadian rhythm is out of whack, I'm working the night shift, and for all the hours I work, I'm not even getting paid a higher salary, even though it's a mid. under Zybra hours to work. So, the time window I'm working is not conducive to um, optimal health, and it doesn't pay a premium, even though I'm working in a shift that prospective employees and others are reluctant to um, undergo. But, um, hauling the objects, having to constantly bend over, overly, stretch just puts a tremendous strain on the body not being able to sit down puts a tremendous strain on the body and this culminates in a recipe for chronic inflammation so every joint in my body is severely inflamed amid working the job and um, it induces a tremendous amount of distress because you could feel the um, agonizing physical pain constantly you could feel it in perpetuity and um, it just stifles your productivity and it encumbers you, it impairs you, it slows you down because your body is so severely inflamed from working that um, it's almost unculpable to say the least. So you have to brook the pain and cope with the pain just to sustain the job. And I'm really doing the work of two to three people 
and when I compare myself to other people who perform the, ta the same tasks as I do, essentially emulate the tasks that I perform in my job. They're slow, they move like they've a hemorrhoid shoved up their rear, and I move in eminently fast, but my employer, my manager, he's not appeased. He wants me to move faster to expedite everything. And when he does a job, he does it like this. You know, he moves like Speedy Gonzalez. Now, of course, I could expedite the speed at which I perform the job, and um, I can increase the pace at which I get tasks accomplished. But yet again, that would um, exacerbate the inflammation because I'd be further overly stretching and I'd be um, further moving. What I mean by all this is that if I'm accomplishing more tasks in a shorter time window then there's going to be more labor for me amid an eight hour shift and um, because I'm getting compensated for my time. It's going to wind up culminating in me doing more tasks than I otherwise would be if I um, didn't move at the maximum speed. So I'm going to wind up expending more calories, exhausting more energy, putting a greater strain on my vessel, further overly stretching my muscles, and further imperiling myself at the job because the job is not conducive to good health. At the job I've had heavy objects fall on me which induced a tremendous amount of inflammation. Um, I'm doing it amid the night shift so I'm getting three to four hours of sleep beforehand as I work a secondary job and um, the jobs encroach on my ability to eat, to sleep, and the constant manual labor, the um, repercussions of overly stretching, of overly bending down, of um, not being able to sit down to attenuate inflammation. It leads to severe muscle strains and leads to severe sprains. You don't want to sprain a muscle ever. The repercussions and ramifications are dire, are dire, detrimental, and deleterious. So working a job that requires you to constantly undergo onerous burdens of manual labor is not only an albatross, but it imperils your vessel because it's not conducive to optimal health. Yet again, if you need to work that job to attain fiat currency, then you have no choice in the matter. If you have bills to pay, then it is what it is. You don't want to drown further in debt. The interest on the debt accrues in the principal perpetuity, and for you to pull yourself out of the muck and mire, you may have to succumb to the onerous drudgery of undergoing manual labor just to um, work your way out of debt for the prospect of one day attaining sustenance. So, I mean, the job can be hazardous. Heavy objects can fall on you. You can get a concussion. You could pass out from the job. You can sprain a muscle and your muscles your bones, your appendages, your vessel is constantly being strained. So it's a strenuous job. It's stress-inducing to say the least. And um, day five was an appalling experience. I'd rate it to be a zero out of ten. I have nothing against the brand, the company, the staff, the co-workers, or anything like that. It's just the tasks that you're required to perform to sustain the job are most unbearable. And I'm going to see if I can switch from full-time to part-time because 
I don't want to wind up with varicose veins. If you have varicose veins, your veins become elongated and gnarled, meaning they become stiff. And um, the valves in your veins don't function properly anymore, so it's not worth it. It's not worth it to um, work this job full time and potentially develop varicose veins and wind up with um, a dilapidated, tattered, ravaged, lesser vessel, which is a multi billion dollar biological machine just to earn a pittance of revenue that I would be preordained to get extorted out of because in the US there's seven forms of income tax so under duress I'm funding someone else's amenities my income, my monicum of income is transferred to um, the utmost unproductive people so if you're parasitic in this economy, you have all the amenities at your disposal, and your life is profusely filled with abundance, time, food, and everything that you conceive of. However, if you're productive, you get extorted out of your pittance of a wage. You um, are penalized for being productive, so it truly really deters you from wanting to work and disincentivizes you to work. And it's quite a shame and quite a pity, but it is what it is. The seven forms of income tax once again encompass federal income tax, state income tax, local income tax, Medicare tax, Social Security tax, inflation, which devalues the purchasing power of your fiat currency, which is not even backed by gold standard anymore, so it's utterly worthless. It lacks intrinsic value. And of course, the seventh form, the seventh form of income tax is uh, um, individual health care mandate penalty. So if you don't have health insurance under duress, you have to pay a penalty. So in this controlled market, you can't control how uh, your revenue that you generate is spent, is remitted to the utmost unproductive people against your own volition. Everything should be privatized and everything should be based on voluntary transactions. The private sector is the only sector that generates wealth. So if everything were privatized, there were no taxes, no regulations, global GDP could easily exceed over one, over um, $100 trillion. Nothing would be stifling nor encumbering economic productivity. How much is global GDP? This is 126, oh, 78. Um, oh, in nominal terms, it's around 79 trillion. So I hope that you found this video to be fascinating and enthralling. And if you have the luxury of not having to work and not having to lift a finger, if you could just loaf around all day and um, slumber all day and um, relish your life, and please do so. Your time is undoubtedly sacrosanct. Relish in every moment. Revel in glory and um, maximize your enjoyment out of life. I find nirvana through sleeping and through eating fruits and vegetables that replenish the nutrients of my body. And sleeping allows me to um, indulge in ecstasy. It's the highest form of um, happiness, in my opinion, because it's sheer and utter relaxation. It's relaxation in its utmost profound form. There is no moment in life that you're even comparably more relaxed than when you're sleeping. So, I hope that you found this video to be intriguing and insightful. Have a wonderful, marvelous day. Goodbye.